Welcome to Teach T Boxing in association with IFL TV and KO Clothing. Once again, I'm in the gym with Lucas Big Daddy Brown. Thanks for joining us again, Lucas. Thank you, mate. Good morning, aspiring in this morning. How um, how's camp going? Been a few weeks, obviously, since we caught up. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, it's just at the point now where yeah. I everything's coming together. Um, yeah, Rod, Rodney's an absolute legend in regards to teaching and the way he teaches and everything else. Nice and calm. It's, um, it's coming across and it's actually sinking in and, and transferring into my sparring and everything else. So I, I honestly could not be happy with everything. Excellent, yeah, looking um, very different um, than, say, you know, a year ago when we last saw you, even six months ago, um, you know, under, under Jeff Bennett. Uh, are, you, are you finding that, is it new, new training regimes that are just revitalising you or is it a complete different approach to how you're going to fight and how you're going to approach the fight? Uh, I think it's a different approach altogether um, and it's actually something that I'm comfortable with rather than trying to m me unlearn everything that I want to do yeah. and do someone else's style. It's just me doing my style the way I want to do it and uh, everyone's sort of complimenting each other. So it's a much more comfortable environment. Um, I've got my head right, everything's right. So it's just all happening in, in the right direction, yeah. Excellent. And uh, obviously chatting with, uh, with Rodney very briefly a second ago and uh, talking say the power is obviously still there but movement is the is the key focus for this and um, yeah, yeah. yeah you're gonna gonna be a big shock for everyone obviously we can see every time I see you looking slimmer and slimmer yeah. um, edging t slightly towards cruiserweight um, <laughs> so um, are you um, are you looking at this fight as if it could go the distance and you just want to be there and make sure that you're getting every round as clear as possible by, by moving and, and picking up those points I think basically I, I made the mistake um, and I keep coming back to it, the Red Dengo fight. I made the mistake of thinking that I was just going to knock someone over. Yeah. Um, and it went 12 rounds and it was the hardest fight I've ever done because I wasn't ready. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't ready mentally, I wasn't really ready physically and I really, really made it hard for myself. Um, we got to about the fifth round and I actually was talking to myself saying, wow, this is how I lose. You know, right, so okay. for that, it was a great learning experience. Um, it is what it is and, and it'll never happen again. So I'm definitely going to be ready for whatever comes, if it goes 12 rounds, goes 12 rounds. You know, if I knock him out in the first round, I'll so be it. But yeah. I, I will be prepared no matter what, yes. Yeah. Excellent, yeah, because I remember seeing your interview with our friends over at IFL after that Rodenko fight and, yeah. and you looked a shell of a man. It was a, a tough, tough yeah. old fight. And it was, yeah. To what, tell the guys at home, said, you know, a lot of guys who would be amateur boxers or young boxers that maybe used to do it in three, four rounds. Yeah. What, what's it like when you, you're digging deep, going into yeah. 11, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th round in a hot, yeah, hot stadium in front of a massive crowd? What, what goes through your head? I think that's, what, that's really what it was as well, was the, the heat. Um, I was overheating like you would not believe. I had no ice on the back of my neck like I asked. Um, and there was a guy that just had a chin like a brick. So yeah. I was hitting him with everything I had. I actually had all the skin from my, my knuckles come off underneath my gloves and right. my wraps. So like I was hitting him, there was no doubt so, I was yeah. actually hitting him. It was just the fact that I wasn't hitting him um, where he was falling down and he just kept coming back. So it was a, a very mental uh, fight for me, just, just as much as physically like draining. Yeah. Um, it was very mentally draining. So yeah, it's, um, <laughs> I was definitely a shell of a move by the end <laughs> Well, let's say like you've been there now, you've been into those deep waters, you know exactly what it's like. Um, do you feel that, you know, with, uh, say, obviously, um, you know, the new, sh your new shape and, and looking a lot slimmer these days and, and the training you're doing, do you feel ready that if it does go to 12 rounds that you'll be a lot more comfortable going into that deep water? 100%, 100%. Um, I think the, the style that I've sort of had for the last couple of fights uh, wasn't something that I could sustain for the 12 rounds, especially yeah. getting all the hits. The difference yeah. is I'm not, gonna get, I'm, I'm not going to get a hit as much in this fight no matter what because everything's different, the movement's different, everything's different, so it's great. Um, the fact that I had to sit there and like cop 12 rounds with the punches, it takes it out of you no matter what, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, take that out of it and uh, I think I'll, I'll be able to not breeze through obviously, but be, be quite comfortable with the 12 round fight, yeah. Excellent, and I know we spoke very, very briefly just before you started sparring, it's a massive weekend for the heavyweight division. Yep, yep. Um, we have David Hay and so someone that you know very well, Mark Demori. Demori um, yeah. So that's on in the UK tomorrow morning, first of all. Um, where do you think that fight's going to go? Uh, Demary's no mug. Um, I've sparred him, I did uh, 10 or 12 rounds with him and we were going hard out the whole yeah. time. So um, he's, he's all about power. Um, he definitely he comes through with that left rip every time. So uh, I believe you said that uh, Hay's the heaviest he's been so yeah. far. Yeah. So I'm not sure if that's going to be for or against him, but um, it is what it is. I, I, I think it's David Hay's fight to lose. Yeah. Demary's coming to fight, don't, don't get me wrong, and he'll go 12 rounds as well. So. It's, it's David Hayes' fight to lose that one. Excellent. And where do you think would be the, the right next step for, for David Hayes? Is that a fight that, that you'd be interested in if you were to overcome Shagayev? 100%. I'd love to, yeah. yeah. It's, um, 
regardless of anything else, it's a it's a good money fight. Like it's a good mm. exposure, money yeah. fight, all that sort of stuff. And and I have no problem doing it over in the UK because the the fans are great over there. Um, I'm very uh, well received and everything yep. else. So for someone like you know Hatton to get on board with uh, promotion and all that sort of stuff, and yeah, I, I would love that. Excellent. And he's not tied down to a promotional company either, so that okay, could yeah, that good. can always make things easier. Yeah, nice. um, and then looking across the pond, um, our old friend uh, Deontay is fighting uh, Spliska. Um, some interesting altercations between them leading up to the press conference yeah, and, and yeah. everything like that. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that fight? Is that a fight that Wilder should win fairly easily, do you think? I don't think easily. I think he's, he's there to win it. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, uh, Spitzka is, uh, is definitely the opponent, but it's a, a good one. Like uh, yeah. Being a lefty and everything else, I think he might shock him a little bit. Um, he's definitely fit, he's ready to go, so there's no uh, dramas in that. But I think, I think what Wilder's promotion and manage, management are doing are doing the right things, giving him as much money as he can before he actually gets knocked out by someone who's going to knock him out. So yeah. I think Povetkin's definitely that one to do that. If not, someone like myself will come along very soon and knock him the hell out. But uh, he, he's getting millions while he's doing it, so why not keep doing it? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely bringing uh, bringing in the money over in America um, and and under the radar, I suppose slightly. There's an IBF heavyweight title fight going on. Uh, yeah. The title that was stripped away from from Tyson Fury, yeah. um, Grascov and, and Prince Charles fighting for that one. Yeah. Um, so another lefty involved there. What um, um, yeah, what are your thoughts on on that fight? And do you think that that the winner of that is maybe the most winnable next fight for yourself if you're chasing another belt? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I think number one, I think Tyson shouldn't have been stripped of it. I think that was a bit, a bit yeah, unfair, but yeah, it is what it is. And having Klitschko now out of the picture just opens it everyone. It opens it for everyone else, which yeah. is great. Um, yes, it does. This one does go under the radar. It's an IBF title, which is a still world title. Like yeah. it's, it's still one of the best titles you can get. So. Um, yeah, I think that's definitely the, the easier win. It's hard no matter what, but the easier win out of, out of the three if we're going to go to three. Um, but yeah, hopefully I, you know, once I get past the game, some big fights like that will come up. I'll either, yeah, maybe, uh, what's the word, amalgamate or yeah, just yeah, combine. Bring all the titles sort of together, shit, yeah. that's it. Well, and see where it goes. Absolutely. I mean, if, yeah, if, you're, say, if you were to pick up the IBF and then you know, between you and Tyson you'd have all the belts and, right, and that'd yeah. be a huge fight. So. Exactly right. Yeah. And we know that that one's bubbling away and, and, and will happen at some point. 100%. <laughs> so, uh, what are your thoughts on, I, I did not been so much of it out here I suppose in Australia, but in the UK that the negative reaction that, that Tyson Fury's been getting from the press um, over in the UK, and you obviously know him, you've met him a few times. Yeah. Um, do you think that you know, perhaps the British press needs to get behind. They've got a, a unified heavyweight world yeah. champion there. Um, yeah. what, what are your thoughts? I think he's done it to himself in a way as well. He's, he's put himself in that position. Some of the shit that he says is just unreal. But, you know, people follow him, people get on board. Whether you love him or hate him, you're still watching. Yeah. So for, from his point of view, he's loving it because he's still getting all the attention, whether it's good or bad. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. I don't like all the bad attention because I'm not that sort of person. But that's, that's his game, that's his ploy. So... Unfortunately, you've got to take the good with the bad, and at the moment, it's bad. <laughs> true, true. And, and do you think, um, so I've only been here for a few years and hasn't been a heavyweight world champion uh, here in Australia before, how do you think it would be received if and when you overcome Shagayev? What do you think it would be like here in Australia? It's unfortunate, but I don't think it will go as well as, you know, if, if I was in UK or America, I'd be you know, revered and celebrated and all that sort of stuff and things thrown at me. But uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunately the Australian way. I think um, people won't really get on board until I win it once, twice, maybe three times. Yeah. And, like, become a household name, then people go, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. I've yeah. supported him from the beginning. <laughs> uh, it's just... It's the Australian way, unfortunately. This is what happens. So, at the moment, there's not too much support in regards to like sponsorships. Yeah. Isn't that coming through? Everyone's supporting on on social media and stuff. Yeah. That's great. Um, but I think it, it's going to actually take me to win it for people to sort of wake up and, and realise that I am something special. Thanks. And, and but you, I know you've, you've noticed it more and more recently. You're getting noticed in the street, asked for photos yeah. and autographs yeah, and things yeah. like that. What, what's that like with that sort, your sort of evolving um, personality? I suppose in the in the it's, public eye. It's, it's funny. There's, there comes times where I'm sort of walking through the shops and people are giving me the stare. And I'm not sure whether to say, yeah, what the hell are you looking at or what? So I've actually said it to someone <laughs> and he was full of staring me out. And I've just looked at him, what the fuck are you looking at? And he, he turned around and goes, I'm a big fan, man. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right. So I've, I've just got to sort of let things slide now. So I, I get stares for everywhere. Being, you know, six foot five and covered in tattoos, you know, I get those, those stares anyway. But um, definitely walking along the street and uh, having people like full on stop their cars and come out and want to take a photo and stuff. It's, it's really good. It's, it's really nice feeling, yeah. Perfect. Hey, so look, I know we've got a lot of fans' questions that have been tweeted in and sent in over Facebook, so yep. we'll get off this interview move on to that very quickly. But Sorry. thanks a lot for your time, Lucas, and awesome. uh, we'll catch you very soon. Thank you Cheers, very much. mate. Cheers.